your final minute. You better be plating. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Heads up! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Plain and simple. It's done. Yeah. Now the judges will have one final look and taste before deciding who will move forward and who will go home. The chicken is on the plate. It is looking excellent. But is it cooked? My curry smells amazing. The chicken is cooked perfectly. And then the judges taste it. I am sweating my coyotes off. Extremely intimidating when they're just staring over you. I think I'm going home at this point. John, please bring your dish up to be tasted. Yes, sir. What did you make? Lemon pan roasted chicken with a green salad and a cipollini onion. Cooked it bone on? Yes, I cooked it bone on, yes. Is that raw? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Dale, would you please step up to the podium? Jewish-style chopped liver. I must say, I like the presentation. Thank you, sir. I'm still a little puzzled as to chopped chicken liver. Do you still feel that it was the right decision? Yes, sir. Surprising. Very brave. Kayla, tell me what you call the dish. Chicken madras with a cucumber raita and a traditional roti. Good, bold flavors. Exactly what I'd be looking for in a madras. But for me, there's far too much cumin seed in there. Very, very powerful. A lot of spice, which is good. A lot of spice, which is not so good. Thank you. Kayla, overall, your dish was good. But is it a Master Chef quality dish? I think it is. Um, Kayla? Chef. It only matters what we think. And we think yes. In the whole scope of moments after the birth of my son, this is number two. I want to be here. I want this more than anybody else here. <sighs> it's a chicken pot pie with a bannock crust. You know, I grew up in the UK. So pot pie, it was a staple for me. You call this a bannock? It's close to a real bannock. Hmm. To me, it's more like a biscuit. OK, fair enough. <sighs> you know, the best meals I've ever had are meals that my mother's cooked for me. Is this something you would ever consider making for your family? Oh, I make chicken pot pie all the time. Yeah, let's Sorry. try something here. How was it we take this out? What's going on? There's a roux with white wine, savory, thyme, sage. And this is the star of the dish right here, the chicken? I'm sure hoping it is. Let me guess. Smelts and chorizo. No, no chorizo in this. Really? 
you're doing? Smelt croquettes. Is that a Portuguese dish? It usually is done with cod. Figured I'd try a little risk and switch it up. You're pretty confident, aren't you? Absolutely. Danny just threw all his fish into a blender. <laughs> Pureed smelts is a no-no. What do you think of the big concerns here? You know, Danny's making a croquette. I can see the smell. It doesn't have a lot of flavor. And it's being lost in the potato and the seasoning. I'm in my zone. They're all nervous. Crap, crap, crap. I'm cool as cucumber. 30 minutes left. I cook what I know. I keep it simple, but I keep it elegant. What are you making here? I am making schmelt and caramelized onion quiche. Quiche? Quiche. Do you think that's going to work? Um, I make quiches all the time. Risky. Okay. Risky. It'll all be good. Megan is a hot mess. I am trying to play cool as a cucumber, but I am freaking out. I got a big bag of tiny little fish. Cook, man. And hey, hi there. Hello, chefs. Are you feeling comfortable with smelts? I never cooked with smelt, but I have made a fish cake. So you're removing all the bones, are you? Yeah, I'm trying to do my best. These are such tiny, delicate little fish, though. Do you think that's the right thing to do? I think the right thing to do is to keep it simple. Yeah. Well, who do you think is going to go home? Not me, somebody else. I'm sticking around, man. I got more bad jokes to make in front of you guys. I want to try to make you laugh, especially. Yeah. Danny, how are those croquettes doing? Uh, almost there. I would have killed that fish. You should be glad I'm up here. Uh, she talks a lot. She's pretty darn cocky. Kayla's got a lot of garbage on her station, man. Kayla, Kayla, Kayla. I'm curious to see if she's creative. I don't think she is. There's the heat of the scotch bonnet. What are you making here? Thai curry. Holy shit, that's hot. How much pepper did you use in that? I used half of a scotch bonnet. Yeah. You know how hot that is, right? I made a really stupid mistake. It's way too spicy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to save this. Can I use a little bit of your whole milk? I'm going to add a crap load of cream to it, some vegetable stock, but at this point, it's not looking good. What's going on here? She smelled croquettes with chili lime sauce. Where are the smelts? I pureed them and then... You pureed them? Why? Why would you puree a beautiful fish like that and turn it into mush? Yeah. It's pretty bad. Danny, saw you out there. Arms folded like this. You're very cool. Always. I see. Is this a joke? I mean, this is Master Chef Canada. And you give me this? This is a smelt caramelized onion quiche with mushrooms and asparagus. First thing I would do, get rid of this, you know? I'm puzzled by this entire dish, the size, the presentation. It's just weird. It's very fishy in an unpleasant way. I call it a uh, spicy red curry with jasmine rice and panko fried smelt. Whoa. You like very spicy food, don't you? Yes. I don't. Try that. It's too spicy. Where is the star of the show? This is it here? Yes, yeah, sure. chef. This lonely little smelt. Right now is probably thinking, how do I end up? in this fire. Please go back to your station. Kind of made my day. Ben, let's see your dish. What do you call these things? 
I call these I really want to stay fish cakes, man. This looks like I want to watch the show from my couch, fish cakes. That's some garnish, but that's garnish? Looks like compost. I don't taste fish. None of it makes any sense to me. Hi, Kyle. Alvin, how are you today, Chef? I'm good. Are you confident? I'm very confident. Very confident? You're not going home, eh? No, I'm definitely not going home today. Tell me, what are you making? I'm doing a sesame crusted cod. I've got some nice mushrooms done up, bok choy. I don't know how I'm going to eat this for my chopsticks. Good luck. I hope it tastes good. I'll step it up a notch now. Quasi. Yes, sir. What's the flavoring uh, in these uh, rice balls here? Chili oil, a bit of sesame seed oil. Yes. And a tiny little surprise. You're not going to tell me. Well, I hope it's a good surprise. I do not like bad surprise. I know that. Good luck. Thank you. Please bring up your dish. I feel I'm going to impress the judges with this dish. I did a sesame crusted cod, rice done in a lobster mushroom broth, and bean sprouts, onion. I tell you, Carl, I had stir fries all over the world. I tell you, I've never seen it like this. Mm. You know, throw away the chopstick for this one. Does that belong to a stir fry? Does this size? No, Chef. You know, I gotta have a big mouth to put this in. What rice did you use? I used basmati rice. You know what you're doing? I would like to think so, Chef. You would like to think so? Think again. It's a vegetarian stir fry. I went with uh, red, yellow, and green peppers. They're kind of my colors. Also, some sticky rice balls. How do you feel about this? I'm pleased. You're pleased? What kind of flavoring did you put in there? Ginger, some chili, a bit of tamarind paste, some coconut milk. Tell you one thing. Couldn't taste any of it. Sticky rice balls. Yes, sir. Is this a surprise? There's a bit of lime in there. The surprise is the lime. The taste. The surprise is the taste. The whole entire taste. I'm surprised, but not in a good way. Michael. Hello, sir. How are you? Who do you want to see go home on this challenge? Mr. Cody over there. Really? So Cody's got under your skin. There's a fine line between confidence and arrogance. I think you'd know about that. I think I definitely would know about that. So tell me what you're making. I'm doing a roast of lamb, carrots, asparagus with a garlic mash. Just got to make sure that it looks beautiful. My cooking style overall has a very minimalist approach to it. I don't like a lot of ingredients, and I love using negative space. Cody, you look a little disheveled. Ooh. OK, so what are you making? I've got a truffle corn pudding here, chef. Corn that's been juiced. It's got a lot of butter. It's got a little bit of thyme. White truffle oil. It's synthetic. The black truffle will come into play later on in the game, I promise you. Any second thoughts on you know what? leaving that, the comfort of the gallery? If I go home on this challenge, I went down in a blaze of glory. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Cody, you could have been safe up in the gallery. Yes, Chef. You took a calculated risk cooking in this challenge. Tell me about your dish. Butter-basted New York strip loin served over top of a truffle-infused sabayon. The dots are a creamed corn infused with white truffle oil and the beet tartare dressed with a truffle honey vinaigrette. Looking at your dish, it's a bit of a train wreck. There's too much going in there. It doesn't work. I can't taste any of the distinctive truffle which we want you to do. I would compare this to a bad date. Oof. It's ridiculously dressed, not very sexy. This one's not going to my prom. Decadent eggs with truffle, carrot puree, asparagus. 
Can't taste a truffle anywhere. Yeah, if I had a little bit more time, I would have shaved truffle on top, but... I'm struggling to say something good about this dish. The Jumping egg is not mess. sitting on the plate. Yeah. The carrot puree, where, where did that? Truffles are underground, so I decided all root vegetables. Eggs work amazingly yes, well with do. truffles. As for the rest of it, it just, it seems as if it's lost its way. I think I said to you once before that I know it's all up in your head and it's a case of you trying to bring that out. And this dish does not do you justice. I look down on my dish and I see a wonderful piece of art, minimalist piece of art. A marinated rack of lamb with two carrots and an asparagus. With truffle mashed potato. With a pinch of garlic powder. I don't know what to say. What is this? If you're speaking of the plating, I did want to go with a minimalist approach. Felt I want, if I saw it in a magazine, I would want to eat it myself. Salty. Why would you use garlic powder? Just wanted a little pinch. I don't, I don't understand the whole dish. Have you ever been to a, an art gallery and looked at a piece of art and said, what the? Helsinki was he thinking when he painted that? Abstract artists need to learn how to draw first. You know, the lamb is nicely cooked. I don't get enough of that truffle in it. The potato puree, a little on the dry side. Three pieces of vegetable, one for each of us. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, chefs. Oh, God, where's my mat? The real trick is the last step, laying out the rice and rolling. And remember, this is a backwards, upside-down maki roll, which means the rice is on the outside. My rice still has a little bit of excess moisture, so I try putting a second nori sheet on the other side. That way, when you roll it up, that will help keep it together. Very roll the wrong way. Hi there, Barry. Hi, Chef. Tell me about your mackie, please. This is fish and chips mackie. It's got tempura crab, tempura asparagus, and the chips are crispy leek. Well, it does look beautiful. Thank you, Chef. But it doesn't meet the brief. The rice should be on the outside. I did two layers of nori. I'm not sure that still meets the brief. There was just a lot of residual moisture in the rice. I see. And so in order to take care of some of that a second layer of nori on the outside. Let's see how it all tastes. It's a little on the dry side for me, but it presents really well. I think you turned this dish around as best you possibly could. I think that this isn't my best effort, but I still don't think that this is the worst dish on the, on the counter. April Lee. Chef Alvin. Sally Mackey. Deli Mackey. Well, it's Executive Deli Mackey. Executive Deli Mackey. Tell yes. me what's in it. On the outside, I've got smoked salmon, avocado, and a salami. On the inside, I have a little tempura, asparagus. Well, interesting is what I would describe this as. Sure. You know, I'm a little bit disappointed because the flavors do not balance. OK. You got very salty packaged meat on top. I like innovation, but you gotta put effort to create innovation. Sure. And I think you can give me that, can you? Definitely, Chef. Well, I hope so, or else you know what's gonna happen. Hi there, David. So, what kind of tortellini are you doing? Ham and cheese, obviously with the uh, more refined hams. And I see you're working on the sauce. Basic bechamel, but I like to use like a gooey type of cheese, so mozzarella is the perfect type of gooey cheese. Yeah, you are sweating like a good one. <laughs> yeah. Is this normally the way you cook, or is it just the added pressure? It's the added pressure. Well, I'll uh, leave you to it and I look Thank forward you, to Chef. trying them. Thanks very much, David. I call it ham and cheese. There's pancetta, cottuccino, and a little bit of mortadella. Wow. That definitely tastes like a ham and cheese sandwich. 
This is Master Chef Canada. It's ham and cheese. There's no spice, no herbs. It lacks excitement. My tortellini is not as good as I thought. It could be me going home. Melissa, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm always good. So Kagan gave you the budget wallet. So where did you spend that ten dollars? My most expensive item was my miso. So I'm trying to get miso. that into everything. How much was the miso? Miso is five dollars. Five dollars. You spent half the budget on miso. miso yeah. Are you making a sauce or are you making a soup? I'm actually making a dressing and I'm making a glaze for the bok choy. This better be the best miso dressing I've ever tasted. Okay. All right. Thank Good you, luck. chef. I'm really looking forward to showcasing exactly what I can do with a few humble vegetables. 15 minutes, you have 15 minutes left. Come on, guys. Becky is just doing her steak. With 15 minutes left, she has to sear it, she has to cook it, it, and she has to rest it. Mmm, it's gotten close. I feel like Becky is a little more rattled than she is letting on. I made a noodle salad with lime, coriander, and chilies, and it all has a, a little bit of miso in it too as well. How much uh, money did you have to spend on this dish? Ten whole dollars. Well, I gotta tell you one thing. It looks more like a five dollar dish to me. But you know what I always say? Taste is king. I like the combinations of textures. However, I'm afraid that $5 worth of miso is not there. And I told you, this better be the best miso vinaigrette I've ever tasted, and it's not. I made steak and onions. I have caramelized onions, sweet onion puree, and then fried shallots. Can you remind me, did you get the budget wallet or the high-end wallet? The high-end wallet because, to be honest, it doesn't look that way to me. The onion purees are quite good. I like the sweetness of them. I think the steak, that's on the medium, medium well side. You were hoping for? Medium well. You know the mistake you made, and you're gonna learn from that. Do you think Kagan achieved what he wanted to do in terms of throwing you off? He probably thinks he does. I think he did throw you off. I like the concept, utilizing something like an onion, and expanding on it, being innovative. But that's the only thing I like. Don't, don't smile, don't smile. That's not smiling time, be serious. Because this steak is overcooked. As I walk away, I can feel how important this is, and I just don't want to go home. Are you okay, you just tell me what to do. Okay, keep wrapping those. Okay, you need Richard, to fry these lights. These, ten minutes, you have ten minutes left. You should be starting the spring roast. I want you to get a bowl with the egg wash. Sorry, I don't know what we're using this for. It's gonna help us seal our spring roll. When Marita gets behind the station, she brings the whole team forward. I already peeled off two for you. And then when Julie gets there, it just lags back again. This comes to a halt. It does. I don't see it. They're right on the board, Julie. Do not forget about the spring rolls that no, are here. No, I'm not going to, trust me. I cannot make another spring roll. Eric and Kayla, they're like two separate teams completely. They want it so much, the emotion is getting the better of them. They're perfect. Okay, 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 multitask. When the oil's hot, you need to put the pot stickers in. I think this is working perfectly for Mike. He made a right decision. <laughs> Very strategic. I can't believe the stress level is going on in this kitchen. No one's gonna get this done. We gotta get the hog out. Okay, so I'm not doing these? Finish it, finish it, just do it. Okay, drop it in the fry and I'll keep an eye on it while you do the rest. <gasps> it opened. If you don't put the right amount of egg wash so it seals before you fry it. Do you supposed to use the egg to stick it? I didn't know that, Marita. Spring rolls are coming out right now. Good? Yes. Dump them out here and salt they them. Done? Yep. Just salt it. Okay, done, done, just leave us. Switch! Okay. Come on, five minutes left! Five minutes left? Yeah, it's really hard to tell who's doing the best right now. Eric, this is the biggest five minutes of your life! Ten! In the frantic five, final moments of eight, the dim sum challenge... Seven! Oh, my six, God! Marita discovers five, that her team's shrimp dumplings are missing eight, in action. We never got those things. Two! One! Stop! Yeah! Stop! <laughs> We've got four out of five dishes on that plaza. Hmm, it was the one we couldn't get. 
both of us were like majorly screwing it up. I'm scared of going home. It's time to taste your dishes. Marita and Julie, please bring your dim sum up. Marita definitely carried that for sure. What happened to the fifth? The shrimp dumpling. It didn't make it on the plaza today. Why not? <sighs> Couldn't get them wrapped in time. Wow. Who's to blame for that misstep? I guess the two of us. Really? Is that what you think, Julie? I had them rolled out. She was the one trying to fill them. So I don't know what happened. What happened here? God, look at that. You can see that it exploded in the fryer. I've never made those before. These look nice, on the other hand. Who's responsible for the filling? I was, Chef. That's dim sum. Big flavors. It's tender inside. That's close to the real thing. Oh, thank you, Chef. This I still can't get over. I'm really sorry. Come on, Julie, get it together. I can't even look at her. I'm going to start to cry too myself. It's burnt. It's very greasy. That's unfortunate. Please go back to your station. I must say, that actually looks very professional. But then, your grandfather had a dim sum restaurant, right? Looks like he passed a lot of that to you. Well, Mike, definitely you put two cats in the cage. <laughs> they definitely came out fighting. But I don't think you got the result you wanted. No, but... At one point, though, Eric did get a bit frazzled. You bloody lost it. You lost it completely. The chef. And you want to know? She got you back. She calmed you down. Thank you, Kayla. We both did great. So let's see the hot gal. You can see it's a little bit loose. That's not what a proper hot gal should be. Severely under season. The shrimp is overcooked and quite bland. Did you actually taste any of the filling? No, Chef. You didn't. You have to. And you can't forget about the jellyfish salad. Marissa is cutting the peppers for the jellyfish salad, but they are not evenly cut. Between the slicing and julienning that needs to go on, you need to have razor-sharp knife skills. It's a huge part of this challenge. What? You got it. You got this. You got this. You got this. Every time I'm tapping back in, I'm just trying to figure out where Marissa is at. I wish that she was being vocal about what she was doing. There's things that are prepped and things that are half ready, and I need to get things finished. You're disappointed, aren't you, both of you? It's an understatement, Jeff. Andy, is this a result that you anticipated when you positioned Nadia and Marissa together? I was really rooting for these two. I think time just got the best of them. Let's taste this bomb me. Who seasoned the chicken? Uh, I did the marinade on the chicken. Did anyone season it? Uh, I guess not. It's bland. I mean, look at that. It's missing the pate in critical areas. Whose fault was that? I put the pate on the baguette. Who made the pate? Now do you prepare the livers? Tastes great. Thank you, I chef. wish there was more of it, but the flavor profile is perfect, delicious, well balanced, great seasoning. The jellyfish salad was this a group effort? Marissa prepped the julienne peppers, and then I assembled it. She just did the peppers. This is me. This tastes a lot better than it looks. The peppers are a little bit roughly cut. You can see that? It was a time crunch. Marissa, it's really sloppy, and it's not what I would 
expect from you at this stage of the competition. I agree with you, Chef. And what happened here? The takoyaki. They look like a disaster. They're raw in the middle. Whose fault is that? I kept asking, how are they? I just kept saying they need more time, they need more time. I was aware that they were not ready yet, but the clock was winding down and I didn't want to give you an empty plate. So undercooked, better than not cooked at all. What happened with you, both of you? I was definitely trying to point out things like, what are we working on and like, what's coming next? Marissa kind of got a little bit quiet. Where I was quiet was when I was trying to focus. This all fell apart for you. It just completely spiraled out of control. This is probably one of the worst tastings I've ever had. Eric gives me beef cheeks. I, I don't, didn't even know you cooked with the cheeks of a cow. I think he intended to be good to me. I bet you he loves beef cheeks. If I was cooking, I would want to use the beef cheeks. Eric gives me the tomahawk steak. I think it's a gift. I grew up on a farm and grew up cooking steak, so it's kind of in my blood. Dale's probably gonna overthink this. I don't think I'm going home on this today for sure. And I would be very embarrassed if I did. I've worked with bone marrow before, just making sure that I manage my time wisely. Eric gave me the flank steak, which is probably like the easiest cut of meat to cook. And normally I'd cook like chicken livers at home, but like that's a big friggin' piece of liver. Some people are actually butchering the meats. Mike, come on, man. He was cutting like steaks of liver, and you should never do that. I should breeze through this because I have the easiest cut out of everybody. Hello, Chef. Dale. So Eric gave you the plum cut. Tell me how you're cooking it. I made my own spice mixture here. You did? What's in the spice mix? Salt, black pepper, white pepper, garlic powder, uh, rosemary, and thyme. Fairly generic. Uh, it's, it's very generic, but I don't like to mess with meat. So I like to actually taste the flavor of meat and just enhance it a little bit. And the cooked degree? I am hoping for medium rare. You're hoping for medium rare? I'm hoping for medium rare. And what's in the pan? Um, it's going to be red wine braised leeks. Good luck with it and watch Thank the time. You. Thank you so much, Keep sir. an eye on that chop. You have 15 minutes left. Julie has one of the easiest proteins to cook here, mm -hmm. and she's struggling with it. She looks lost. She's looking at things, prodding, poking. It's as if she's doubting her every single move. Should I be cutting my meat? I'm not trying to send her home, but she just gets frazzled by anything. Dora is the one who is really struggling here. She was standing around, pacing up and down, waiting for her cheeks to cook. I'm waiting on my pressure cooker. I'm freaking out right now. And she seemed to have nothing else to work on. Cook, you bastard, cook. <laughs> I'm very concerned about Danielle. She lost a lot of time on, on trying to peel the underside of the tongue, which didn't need it. One minute! You should be plating! Shoot, shoot, shoot. I have so much shit going on. I think the steak is good enough to get me into the top 10. Finishing touches on those plates, please. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Heads up! The dish today is spiced tomahawk steak with parsnip stuffed leeks and tricolor french fries. Dale, you told me you were going to cook this medium rare. This is raw. It is blue raw. It registered 127 in three different places. I don't care what it registered. There's nothing magical here. There's no sauce to dip the steak in. There's no jus. It's, it's uninspiring. First of all, don't argue. Yes, yeah, sure. chef. Nobody eats ribeye this thick, rare. Emotionally and mentally, this is the lowest I've been so far. Julie, please come up. What do we have here? 
a marinated plank steak with a chimichurri, and then I did um, fried potato skins, and then I did a corn and avocado salad. So this you meant to cut through, I guess? But you didn't? It's all one piece? OK, let me do the cutting for you. Well, the meat's cooked very nicely. You have some nice color there. There's good qualities about it. This is delicious. But the star of the show here, it's under-seasoned. When you first described your cooking to us, you described how much passion you have. I'm not sure we've seen that yet. Mm. Mike, please bang up your dish. I want so badly to get in the top 10. You don't want to be number 11. Liver and onions on a bed of cauliflower puree. It looks, um, oh my god. Look at that. Yeah. Why does it uh, turn that color, chef? Because you're not supposed to fan it out. It oxidizes. I don't even want to try it. I know what it's going to taste like. Sorry, chef. Please go back to your station. Oh, God. Getting on a top 10 ain't easy. No one said it was. Tough crowd today. Ooh. I didn't know really what to do with cheek, so usually what I do with tough cuts of meat is I make stew. I want to like it. It just looks like barf. Well, it comes apart nicely. There's no flavor in the meat. I've never cooked with cheek before. It's disappointing. Sorry to disappoint, chef. The color. It's so unappetizing. Yeah. Totally under-seasoned. Yeah. It is surprising how much seasoning you need when you are braising or stewing. This won't cut it. It actually looked like somebody ate it already and spat it out. Now it's time to hit the fryers. There's so many fried elements in the frito misto. Smelt, halibut, oysters, squid rings, baby octopus. You fry them all at different times and try to get a uniform cook in all of them, not have some undercooked and some overcooked. The frito misto is a lot of work, especially with just me handling the fish. It's taking too much time. You have to do the oysters huh? in the fryer, oysters. Oh, yeah. I know that we're missing so much. We haven't even started our ceviche. We haven't put our St. Jacques in the oven. We haven't added our fried elements into the cone. We're behind, we're behind. We need to pick it up. People, we have enough. We should have had Taya doing more with the seafood that she can actually touch. Wait! Only two more minutes left. <laughs> I am desperately trying to get these coquille St. Jacques done as quickly as possible. Pipe it, pipe it, quick. It's right there. Hurry up. I'm right. It looks terrible. It's very embarrassing. It's going to take forever. If we just finish, it would be a miracle. Let's go. Let's show them what's up. I just wish I could hide in a hole right now and not present this dish. I'm just super embarrassed. What's going through your minds right now? I think we're a little defeated. I think I just spent too much time trying to take all the responsibility for the fish. Well, there's no frito misto, no aioli, no potato on top of those beautiful mussels. So I'm going to start off by trying the coquille Saint-Jacques. I'm looking for a sea scallop that is just cooked. The cook on the sea scallop is actually very nice. <laughs> Super moist. And great flavor on the potatoes, nicely seasoned. I'm getting a little flavor from the Gruyere cheese. Let me try the sardine next. Delicious. Very flavorful, very well done. Good showing for what it is you've done. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you, you, Chef. Who cooked the mussels? I did. It looks like they spent a little too much time in the broth. I mean, you can see how dry that is. Yeah. I'm going to dig a little deeper and see if there's any that are cooked properly, but I, I don't even know where to go here. It's All right, let's move on. How do you feel, Jeremy, about the ceviche? 
not too great. We waited till the last minute. It looks very dry. It's not a ceviche. It's lacking in complexity. There's no herbs in here. You know that already, though. Yeah. I don't want to kick you when you're down. We're down. You guys are down right now. Oh, God, this is rough. OK. Pedro Misto is not there. Let's just look at the sub squid here. OK, who did this? I made the filling. Um, Jeremy cleaned it. I cleaned it. it. Wow, that seems like a team effort. And it looks good. Nice caramelization here. Nice. <laughs> perfectly cooked and perfectly seasoned. And a compliment to on the stuffing. Look at that. You got the garlic, you got the pine nuts. Very tasty. This is so good. I'm gonna bite into the other one. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Thank you. You did not get everything on the plate, but A for effort. Thank you, Thank Chef. Thank you, Chef. I'm super disappointed in myself. I think our strategy was just off from the beginning. I should have split up the tasks more evenly. That was brutal. Michael G, I think you're the fastest home cook I've ever seen in five seasons. <laughs> Thank you. Michael, if you go home today, you have no one else to blame but yourself. Do you think you're putting too much on the line right now? Definitely not. I think either way, they were probably going to keep me down here. I think they think that I'm a bit of a threat. True that. Speed is a good thing, but remember, this is precision quality, right? I agree. Thank you, Chef. How are you feeling about things? Feeling great. No regrets at virtually volunteering to be in this pressure test? <laughs> uh, absolutely not. One more chance for me to present food to the three of you. Happy with the outcome? Yeah, I'm very happy with the outcome. Not only do I want to see perfectly cooked salmon, but I want to see six distinctive layers. Do you think you've been able to achieve that? I think so, Chef. You ready to take a look? What do you think? Awesome. I like it. Awesome is not the word that I would probably use. I would have liked the pastry just more tightly wrapped around that salmon so there's less of a space between where the salmon ends and the pastry starts. And did you season every layer, Michael? I did. You know, it's not perfect, that's for sure. Pastry a tad undercooked, salmon just a little over. You have to give this a lot of thought. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Chef. Rum or bourbon? Rum. 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 Stay tropical, man. Heads up. So fancy, Josh. Listen. Listen. Well, he seems to be very relaxed. He's talking to calories. He's talking to everyone. Yeah. Why not cook with fire? Woo! Ah, oh, the flame. Chef. Josh. How are you? I'm great. More importantly, how are you? I'm doing pretty well, actually. I got my passion for going for my topping. It smells amazing. Kind of been wafting it towards the gallery. I think they appreciate that. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good with this right now. Well, good luck. Appreciate that, Chef. Again, I love that limoncello. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. The moment I take my cake out, my heart sinks. My whole entire cheesecake has fallen. Two minutes, two minutes left. Finishing touches, tidying up, getting ready to present. I go to pull the spring for him, and sure enough, it is stuck to that bad boy. 45 seconds remaining. You need to hustle, hustle, hustle. I got to get my cake on this plate, but it's stuck. I mean, the thing is basically frozen to the cake pan. Oh, Damn it, Josh. Get your spatula. spatula to force it off. 10 seconds remaining. Oh, it's going, it's going. It's going. Nine, eight, seven, okay. six. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands up. Oh, God, that was crazy. I'm really worried. I've got a pit in my stomach. Josh's looks the messiest, probably. Half of his cake is still on his plate. Dale, please bring your cheesecake up. I don't know what to think as I'm walking up. I know my cake tastes good. I know it may not look good. Are you happy with the way your cheesecake turned out? I'm very disappointed. I make cheesecake all the time. It's pretty much my favorite dessert. It's a generous portion of topping to crust.
Very smooth, very creamy. The cream cheese is coming through very nicely. And the contrast of that crust, it eats very well, but doesn't present as well. I thought you'd made this hundreds of times. I have, Chef. You know, I expected so much more from you based on how confident you were going into this competition. Fanned out strawberries are very typical. Everything I've seen from you so far is creative. I think my cake looks the worst, hands down. Josh, would you please bring a cheesecake up? I'm just hoping that the flavors are gonna speak for themselves. The judges are gonna see that I was trying to be innovative, creative, and take risks. Look, obviously from its immediate presentation, it's disappointing. The cracks, the way it's slumped, damaged edge. But it holds well, very good. Have you made cheesecake before? No, I have not. That passion fruit, it's quite magical. Thank you, Chef. But it still looks disastrous. I agree. The plating wasn't there, but I wanted to be innovative and use flavors that hadn't been done before. And I'm hoping you're going to see that and taste that with my cake today. I can understand that you're hoping that. You think that's innovative? It's inspired by the art we saw yesterday. It's a little postmodern, you know? <laughs> Aside from that, the flavors are where the innovation the is. Flavor. The flavor. Well, what was it? Tropical? Tropical. I Tropical. Want... Absolutely. I think all of my food has been innovative, creative, and delicious. I certainly think this is the same. I think the plating uh, just got away from me in the last minute there. The only thing tropical about this is a typhoon hit it. The only thing that can save you right now is how this thing tastes. I didn't make that soft custardy stuff. Eggs, cream, milk. Sometimes we help each other out, but step by step, how do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do that? I found that very strange. Tamara, what do you think? Honestly, Carly has to ask Tamara in top nine, how to make a custard. Add cornstarch to cold water and then mix it in the mixture. You're doing something that you don't know how to do. It's, it's what I would have done. It's just more making sure that you're doing it the right way. Hi, Julie. Hi. What are you doing? An enamel bar. Uh, yes, and? I'm changing up a lot. I infused some espresso into my ganache. I'm making a raspberry filling, but I'm going to put Philadelphia cream cheese. Julie is not really using anything that's in an enamel bar. You got the form right. But maybe the content's a little bit mixed up. Who's going to go home then? Who do you want to go home? Oh, really? <laughs> Kayla. <laughs> I heard that, Julie. Someone's got to go home. What are they? It's a toasted coconut and white chocolate cup with custard and walnut filling on a chocolate liqueur ganache. You know, every great chef cooks in their head. They yes. taste in their head. They present food in their mind. They dream about food. Did this come out the way you envisioned? No, I envisioned it that they were in ball form. Um, I couldn't really figure out a way to do that. So in the last five minutes, I put them in a cup. They're just so drab, so blah. It's very dry. Unfortunately, you're right. This is not what I would come to expect at this stage at all. Carly! Chef Elvin. If that was served in a restaurant, they would send it back and say, what the hell was wrong? This is the custard, right? This is Master Chef Canada. And you said you hope to win. But with that, you don't have a hope. A raspberry, chocolate, and espresso in the name of art. How do you feel about how this turned out? I do not like the presentation. It's clunky. Tastes pretty good. The big problem, though, here, it does not resemble an Anaimo bar in any way. I think it does. What matters more to you, though, what you think or what we think?
obviously what you guys think. You've made it to this point. You need to push a lot harder. Rita, you got more chocolate on your apron than you did on the plate. <laughs> it's all over the place today. All right, where is Nanaimo? I would say the bottom of the Nanaimo is what inspired me to do the truffles. What's in here? Not quite sure. That scares me a bit. A cook who's not sure of what's inside of their dish. That's a very dried truffle. It's not your best work. So I have a coconut and a chocolate panna cotta and a vanilla panna cotta that clearly didn't set up. Good. Not so good. Bad. Really bad. Yeah. You know what I like about you, Keller, is your ambition. I personally like the idea of a panna cotta being reinvented. And I think the flavors you've chosen, I think it's great. You have the coconut flavor, and it's not too sweet. This one, unfortunately, it's really too bad that this one collapsed. But that tastes pretty good. Where's Brooke at right now? She's just doing her filling. Brooke's going to fall out. apart. It's called a pressure test for a reason. So uh, I just got to keep calm and stay focused, and I'll be OK. Medic. Oh, I should cut herself, too. I cut myself. I am freaking out. She's fine. Brooke's done at this point, for sure. 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes left. You need to be filling your raviolo by now, and those need to be moving. Brooke, would you please come up with your dish? Brooke, how do you feel about your dish? Um, <clears throat> I definitely felt the pressure in that pressure test. So as you can see, I didn't have a chance to get that piece of sage fried. Maybe a little Parmesan cheese missing? How do you think the egg's going to be? I'm praying. <sighs> that works. I feel the dough is a little on the thick side, and therefore a tad underdone. Better not there than there. Less is more. Agreed, chef. I hope that I can get my nerves under control and show you what I can really do in the kitchen. You only have one chance, unfortunately. It's dead. So, Lynn, who gets the meat grinder? I'm giving this meat grinder to the best pastry chef in the kitchen. I'd like to see him make a cake with the meat grinder. <laughs> Christopher. I have never used a meat grinder in my life. It looks like a medieval torture device. This is a take on the Hawaiian locomoco. It's a bed of rice, a pork patty, mushroom gravy, fried onion rings, and a fried quail egg. On the other side is a baked pineapple and a goat cheese salad. I must admit I never had this dish before. I've been to Hawaii, but unfortunately I wasn't eating this dish. So is this something that uh, you picked up when you were in Hawaii? I've never actually been. This is something that I saw online once and I wanted to try at home. I've used a type of marinade that I use for pork, garlic, and Chinese five spice. In terms of spices, it's well seasoned. But you know, you managed to use ground pork and make this patty dry. This is supposed to be a Hawaiian dish. When I eat this, I cannot taste any form of Hawaii in here. There's so much you gotta done with that grinder. You got an onion ring, you got a burger, and you got an egg. It's not very refined to me. That actually has some good flavor. Thank you, Chef. I would agree with Alvin, it's on the dry side. A little more fat yeah. incorporated yes. into the meat would have elevated it. Rice, it's a bit bland. You are the only Chinese dude I know <laughs> that is challenged by rice. Yes, yeah. But overall, at this stage of the competition, you have to deliver much, much better. Trevor, why'd you do this to me, man? I gave Taya sugar because I know she's a contender. I wish I had way more baking experience. 
I've decided to make a nectarine sponge cake with a caramelized peach thing. I'm making way too much. I screwed up my measurements. I've never made a cake. I'm totally taking a risk right now. <sighs> the stress is totally getting to me. I'm really scared for Taya. She just needs to stay focused. This does not work. I'm going home. I know it tastes good, but it's not pretty at all. <laughs> I am even having a hard time looking at it. I did a nectarine lemon sponge cake with a caramelized peach in amaretto and mint. Oh, man. <sighs> it's a hot mess, just like me. You know that expression, my dog ate my homework? That's what that looks like. No, it looks like your dog attacked it. <sighs> well, the good thing is, can't make this look any worse. You know what? It's good. It tastes really good. Good flavors, good acidity, but is this master chef quality? Do you have that technique to be in this kitchen? I do, chef, I do. Well, it's not on this plate. Thank you, chef. Julie, what are you making here today? I'm making an apple zeppoli, and I'm incorporating the beer inside my batter and also inside my caramel. Like a donut? Yes. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that what you did for the audition? It is what I did for the audition. Okay. But it's going to be completely different. You changed the name, but it's still ultimately a donut, right? All right, well, we'll see. We will. Hey, Danny. I noticed, you know, half the beer's gone. I got one here, bud, if you oh. want it. Oh, boy, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So what are you doing there? Spicy and sweet pork, small potato, a little sour apple coleslaw. Portuguese. No, it's just a little twist. Apple and, yeah, apple and pork is not Portuguese? Yeah, yeah, it is, of course, but got to change it up a little bit. Hey, Pino. Chef Claudio. It smells nice up here. What are you making? You. I'm going to make a pork chop with lentils and an apple compote. So what are you going to do to stand out? Because there's a lot of pork happening right now. The apple compote I'm going to make is really going to stand out. And then I'm going to make like a beer reduction. What do you so think it needs some herbs? And I start second guessing myself. All right, good luck. Thank you. I start tasting things, and the combination of flavors that I expected isn't there. Pork chop, creamy lentil, some pancetta and vegetables, beer, some lemon and parsley, and a little apple compote beside it. This doesn't look like something you would do because the other dishes I've seen from you look very elegant. I don't know what to say, I'm speechless. It doesn't taste very good and it looks worse. This borders on prison food. It's sad. You know, you're like a roller coaster. You go up, you go down, you go up. This is down. I might be on the chopping block today. This is an apple zeppoli with beer in the batter and a mascarpone creme anglaise. I find it very dull. We could have done so much more with the apple. You know, every time you come up here, it's an opportunity for you to show what you can do. Suffering from a case of deja vu here, you think you can win this competition cooking donuts? Maybe I can, but that's not my strategy. You can't. We need to see more. Danny's dish looks like an 80s throwback from, like, a really bad diner. Beer marinated spicy pork with sour apple slaw, beer honey, mixed apple chutney. So it's a little spicy and sweet together. So it's a stewed pork dish with a mayonnaise-based slaw in the center. I struggle with the two coming together on one plate. It tastes marginally better than it looks. We really need to see that you're not a one-trick pony. I don't think you've done that for us. I don't taste apple or beer in that. This is the worst dish I've had so far. 